Hi, my name is Christopher J. Pace. I'm a freelance Linux consultant and the purpose of this video today is to show the more common uses of PHP MyAdmin, cool things that you can do uh, using a graphical user interface as opposed to manually entering MySQL statements. The first step is to type in the server URL. Uh, ideally it should be set up using a HTTPS or secure web host that way you're not broadcasting your MySQL root password um, across the internet. So I'm just gonna log in here real quick and show you some of the cooler features of PHP MyAdmin. As you'll first notice here off to the left it shows all the databases that are currently installed on the MySQL server. In this case we've got a couple Gallery 2 and Web Calendar. Uh, by default Information Schema and MySQL should always be present. They control permissions, things like that. What we're going to do here real quick though is we're going to create a database and assign a new user as the administrator on that database. To do that we're going to go ahead and click the Privileges tab here. and then we're going to click add a new user. We're now going to enter in the username which we're just going to call this test. The host should always be set to local unless you allow remote MySQL connections which usually isn't the case. And for password we're just going to set up a quick password and retype it. Alternatively, you can also generate a random password using this generate button here. But for the extents and purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to type in the test password as just test. On this database for user section here, this is where the magic happens where PHP MyAdmin creates a new database for this user basically what we want is the second option here to create database with same name and grant all privileges to test at the database test at localhost so we're just going to go down here and click go and every time that you do something with PHP my admin it will give a status at the top here in this case the status is good we've added a new user and it also tells you, in some instances, what the MySQL syntax was used. Here we created user test at localhost, identified by test. We granted usage on star.star .star to test at localhost, identified by test. We created a database test, and then we granted all privileges on test to test. Now one thing to bear in mind, too, is with this second SQL statement here, our test user also has control of everything else on the server. So they're also able to drop new database or drop databases, create new databases, things like that. Most of the time it's not an issue, but what we're going to do here now is click under privileges and we're going to go ahead and add a new user called test12. Again, we're going to have them logging on through localhost. And to keep things simple, we're just going to use test12 as the password. Right now, for the global privileges, we're not going to set anything. We just want to create this user here first. So we're going to click Go. And then from here, we can select our database test again go to privileges and basically from here you can see what's already applied so you have the username test that we created earlier who has all privileges on this database now to create a user that only has privileges for this specific database we can do it one of two ways one way is by clicking the SQL tab here and saying grant all privileges on test.star to test 
at localhost. We can do it that way. Or we can go to home privileges and then clicking this edit tab next to our test one two. From here we're allowed to select add privileges on the following database test and we can give him full access this way. So that way our test 1-2 user isn't able to create new databases or drop existing databases. So that's two different ways that you can create users and assign privileges to them. What we're also going to look at is how to create new databases and insert fields into them as well. We're going to go ahead and click home here and on this create new database area we're just going to call this sample. And then we just click the create button. Pretty easy. Next we're going to go ahead and click on structure and we're going to create a new table on the database sample. We'll call this uh, sample table. And let's just say that we got three fields. We're going to click go. Field, we'll just call this uh, field one, field two, and field three. Go ahead and set them all to manager, it doesn't really matter. Uh, use field one as a var char. Give it length of 20. Uh, from here you can select default is null, current timestamp, or whatever you want. And we're going to select our var char under field one as our primary index key and then we're going to click go. Pretty easy. Now when we click back on sample here, we can also enter a manual SQL statement. We can search the database do a query. I'm going to go back to the home now and I'm going to select an existing database that does have some data here, Gallery 2, which in this instance is a uh, uh, gallery website. And what I'm now going to show you is how to make backups using PHP MyAdmin. We're going to click on export here. And from here, basically, it allows you to export in a variety of formats. CSV, if you want to import it into another software. Uh, you can export it to Excel, Word, LaTeX, open, uh, OpenOffice.org, Document, Spreadsheet, Text, whatever you want to do. In this case, though, we're going to make a backup. So we're going to select this option to add drop table. Uh, that's useful if the database already exists. So for instance, if we try an upgrade on a database or something like that and it goes south, we can then use this SQL uh, backup to first remove that bad database and then import everything back in. Next, we're going to scroll down and select this Save as File option here and then click Go. And now Firefox is prompting me to save this backup. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK here and just toss it on my desktop for right now. So we've made a backup. 